doesn't love a classic tote bag? I know I am a huge fan of a good tote bag and I've wanted to make the perfect tote bag pattern for a while now and I've finally got around to doing it. So that is what this video is. I'm going to show you how to make a very neat tote bag. This is the one I've just finished making in the tutorial but you can also make one that is a landscape version. So the pattern I've released for these includes both of these shapes. Um, the first one is the classic portrait and then the other is a landscape version. And they've both got boxy little bottoms. So the portrait one has a smaller boxy bottom and then the landscape one has a wider chunky bottom. Chunky bottom, boxy bottom. I've said bottom too many times. I've been having quite a lot of fun making these. I have just endless amounts of tote bags hanging around now. This is one of my favorites that I've made in a lovely Laura Ashley fabric. On the topic of fabric, the best fabrics to make these in, this is probably the lightest I would go with the fabric, um, just because you want it to have some sort of strength and shape. Obviously you can do it in a lightweight fabric if you want, <laughs> but the bag definitely works best made up in a medium weight cotton. So any sort of calico is good. This is a really nice old linen bed sheet um, and it worked very nicely. I didn't add a pocket into the tote bag because personally I never use pockets that are in these sorts of tote bags and I thought if you want to have a pocket I'd rather have a little zipped pouch so I might make some matching little zip pouches to go in my tote bags. So there we go that's my new pattern I'm very excited about this one it's a good basic to have and great for beginner sewers if you're a little bit scared to start sewing, this is a great one to start with. The pattern is now up on my website and as always I will leave it linked down below in the description bar. So let me show you how I made this tote bag. So to start off with you want to decide if you're going to make a portrait or a landscape bag. You can obviously make both in the pattern but it's good to know which one you're making because it depends on where you put the notches. So I've gone ahead and printed out the instructions and the A4 slash US letter size pattern. You don't have to print out the instruction booklet, you can have it on your phone or on your computer next to you. The instruction booklet will show you how to arrange the paper pattern, so just stick all the pages together and then we can cut out the pattern pieces. And you'll be left with two pattern pieces in total. Now on to choosing your fabric, like I mentioned earlier, it's good to have a fabric that's got a little bit of weight to it, but not something super heavy because that will just be too hard to sew. So I found some of this striped fabric that I had left over in my stash from making an apron and I'm going to use that to make my tote bag. I don't usually cut things out with the rotary cutter but I quite like cutting out the tote bag with the rotary cutter and just getting some really clean edges. And then a really important step is to put the paper pattern piece back on top of your main tote bag body and we're going to take note of the top notches. So the first thing we're going to do is make the straps. You should have two pieces of fabric and we're just going to take those over to the ironing board, give them a good press flat before folding in half so that the wrong sides are facing each other. You then want to open this back out and you'll have a nice centre crease down the middle. Then we're going to take those outer long edges and meet those into the middle and press them flat. Once you've pressed both of those ends into the middle, you can then fold it in half again and press it down. Then we're going to take it over to the sewing machine and just edge stitch down that long end. Once you've stitched the strap, give it a really good press before we take it back over to the table and you're going to want to put it back on top of the paper pattern piece and there are some secondary cut lines at the end so you just want to take note of these and chop off any excess and this will give you two very neat even length straps. Because no matter how good we are at sewing, it's always hard to get perfect ends on your straps. Moving on to the main body of the bag, we're going to put both of the pieces wrong sides facing and I'm just going to pin down the sides so that they don't move anywhere. And we're going to stitch down the long sides with a 0.5 centimeter seam allowance. Taking it back over to the table, we're going to trim down that seam allowance to reduce bulk. And then we're going to press that seam flat. Sometimes with a French seam you would press it open, but because we've trimmed down the seam, it's easier just to press it flat. Then turn the bag inside out so that good sides are facing and press down those side seams so you get a nice straight edge. 
and we're going to stitch down that edge again but this time with a one centimeter seam allowance and these will give you some nice neat French seams so no overlocking is needed for this bag. Give those side seams a good press and you want to press them so that they're facing towards each other. Then just turn the bag so that the good sides are facing you and give those side seams a good press so they're nice and straight. Now we're going to stitch the bottom close so you're going to want to start by stitching a 0.5 centimeter seam allowance all the way along and then again trimming down the seam allowance to reduce bulk. Then take the bag, turn it inside out, really push out those corners at the bottom and give it a good press so that it's sitting nice and flat. And just like with the side seams, we're going to stitch along the bottom with a one centimeter seam allowance. Now we're going to find the corners and add that little boxy shape to the bottom of the bag. This is an optional step, but I think it adds a really nice touch. So you're going to want to make sure you stagger your seam allowance. So one French seam should be pointing one way and the other the other. And I like to use a pin to make sure that the seams are matching up both sides. And then I'll just pin it into place before I mark out where I need to stitch. So for the portrait bag, you want to measure 4.5 centimeters down from the edge and then square that across and draw a line where you're going to stitch. You've got one little boxy corner there and then just go and repeat the same for the other side. This is what the bottom of the bag should be looking like now. You've got these nice squared off corners that just add a really good shape to the bag. We're then going to turn the bag back the right way around and push out those corners. You don't need to go and press it just yet, we'll do that all at the end. And then we're going to work on this top part. So the first thing you want to do is if your fabric is pretty bulky, it's a good idea to cut a little corner off at the top on the side seams. And then we're going to take it over to the ironing board and there we're going to press it down by one centimeter all the way around. And then we're going to fold it down again by 2.5 centimeters. I do the one centimeter by eye, but then the 2.5 centimeters, I get out a little ruler so that it's even all the way around. Now we're gonna add the straps. So you're gonna to want to unfold that 2.5 centimeter fold and keep the one centimeter fold there and find your little notches that you made earlier. Take one strap and it's gonna sit in between those notches. And I'd like to just clip it into place before taking it over to the sewing machine and stitching across the top. This is just to hold them into place. Then go ahead and stitch the strap onto the other side. And now we want to put both of the straps so that they're sitting inside the bag. And we're gonna stitch along the very bottom edge of that fold with the straps inside the bag. We're then going to pull the straps out of the bag and fold them up so that they're a 90 degree angle to the top of the bag and pin them into place again. This time we're gonna edge stitch all the way around the very top edge of the bag, making sure we catch the straps as we go around. And then finally on all of the ends of the straps, we're gonna reinforce them by stitching a boxed cross. This gives the bag a good amount of strength so you don't have to worry about the straps coming off at any point. I also went and added my little label to the front and then gave the bag a very good press. I particularly focused on that bottom boxy section. It should just fold up naturally and you can just give it a good press. And there we go. There is your finished tote bag. It's the same method to make the landscape tote bag. There's just a little difference when you're taking up the bottom corners. Um, but apart from that, that is how to make the tote bag. Such a great little project, really good one for beginners or if you have some leftover fabric that you want to make something out of but you can't really make a full garment, then this is a really great little project. As always, the pattern is linked in the description bar below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one.